I dropped out of high school at 17. By the time I was 22, I had my first million dollars. Now, if you stripped it all away, if I lost my business and my investments, my products, everything I had, could I build it back again? Well, this is exactly what I would do and the mistakes that I would avoid. What's up guys, JT Franco here, the no bullshit Amazon seller, and we're gonna get right to the chase here. How would I rebuild from zero if I lost everything? So I lost my businesses, I lost literally everything, I have nothing, and I'm at zero, no income, okay? A lot of get this question a lot because of course, if you see what I would do, you can take from it and see you know, the steps that you could take. So let's just get going. So the first thing I would do, if I had zero, I wanna get back to a million, okay? That's my goal, I wanna get back to a million. How am I going to do this? The first thing that you need is some money, you need an income, right? So if I have nothing, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna get a job, I'm gonna get a day job, um, and that's the first step. So for those of you at home, you, most of you probably have that done, right? Check. So you have your day job, you have income coming in, and the thing with income is it's a balance because of course you have expenses. Now when I was a kid growing up, my dad was living paycheck to paycheck. You know, he would come home sometimes and surprise me with a gift, um, and I was always happy. But if I was to go back in time, I would say, Dad, don't do that, okay? Don't buy me shit when you're living paycheck to paycheck. Be selfish, okay? Be selfish. And that's one thing that I wanna put out there is that when you're on your grind, you wanna get to the next level, it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to do things for yourself, to think for yourself because that's what you need to do to elevate yourself. Don't be ashamed to do that because the first thing you need to do is to balance your income and your expenses, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck. Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck, that means that your income and your expenses are the same, okay? Your income and your expenses are the same or even worse, they're the same and you have debt. Now, of course, that's a problem. So then what you gotta do is make it so that at the end of the day, you have more money than you have expenses, okay? So the way to do that is to either increase your income or decrease your spending. Very simple. So cut out the luxuries, right? And of course, that gets really hard. I, I know how that is when you have a social circle, right? And you have friends and, oh, they're going out to the movies. You know, I should go out to the movies. Or oh, we're going to go out to dinner. I don't wanna say no to going out to dinner, even though you know you probably shouldn't spend that 25, 50 bucks on dinner, you're gonna go out because your friends invited you. Well, here's the problem. If you do what everybody else does, you're gonna get what everybody else gets. If your friends are super successful already and they're going out to dinner, they deserve that, you don't, okay? Stay home. And if they, your friends aren't super successful and none of you deserve it, then just stay home still. Because if again, if you're gonna do what they're doing, you're gonna get what they're getting. If you want to elevate yourself, you got to be able to make that decision. And that's a tough decision, that's a big sacrifice, and I understand that, but that's fundamental. So that's the first thing I would do. Right now, I'm used to living with some luxuries in life, I would cut them all out. I would go back to grassroots, what I did when I was 17 years old, and I had a $500 a month st you know, studio apartment. I was literally eating, literally eating cans of tuna with rice. That was my daily meal, tuna can, rice, a little bit of mayo, uh, and if I was lucky, I would treat myself to a frozen pizza, okay? that's grassroots. So if you're following this along, audit yourself and see what expenses and luxuries you can cut out for the short term because the goal is to get back there. But for right now, we need to, we need to get that out of our life because that's not important. Next, I have my income coming in. I've balanced my expenses. So I'm going to make sure that I pay myself first. Now this is a concept. Um, if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if you've read um, The Richest Man in Babylon, I think that's where this concept comes from first. It's the idea that when you get a paycheck, you get paid, you never are leaving money for yourself. You're always giving money out to other people, right? You're giving your money out to tax first, of course, and you give your money out to rent, you give your money out to the guy that sold you the food, the guy that sold you your clothes, and you never leave anything for yourself. So the idea is to put money to yourself first, because otherwise, you're just working for everyone else. You think you have one boss, you think you have a boss at work, right? But say you work 40 hours a week, you make, say, I don't know, um, $2,000 and you spend $1,000 on your rent, okay? 40 hours a week, you made two grand and you put $1,000 to rent. You effectively worked 20 hours for your landlord, okay? You buy a $200, like whatever, a, a t-shirt, like <laughs> it's an expensive t-shirt, but you buy a $200 t-shirt, that's four hours. You effectively worked four hours for Gucci or whoever you got that $200 t-shirt from, right? So you're never actually working for yourself, you're working for everybody else if you don't pay yourself first. So I would set up a system where you put away 10, 15, whatever percent, highest percent you can possibly reach for and put it away for yourself. 
and then pay everybody else. And Robert Kiyosaki says that when you do it that way, if you pay yourself first, you will find a way to pay everyone else out. So now you have that figured out. You have a regular job, you're paying yourself first, you're sacrificing things, going out with your friends and doing these cool things. But by making those sacrifices, what you've done is you freed up your time. So now I would use this time for more work. This is when you get, this is when it feels really like a grind, really like a hustle. Try to find different ways to increase your income, right? So like I said, increase income, decrease expenses. You did decreasing expenses, now hit that income. So get that income up. This is just more odd jobs. I wouldn't consider this a side hustle. Um, this isn't something you're doing for yourself or trying to start up for yourself. This is just finding extra work, extra part-time work. What I did, I did skip the dishes. So skip the dishes. I don't know if you have that in the States, but that's basically Uber Eats, right? So I was delivering food. I had a catering company at the time and I was working a sales job. So what I would do is I would wake up early in the morning, figure out my catering company orders for the day, bust my ass to work, sell product for 10 hours, go to my catering company, f make those food, make the orders, deliver the, the catering deliveries and then you know log into my skip the dishes app and then deliver food all day and that is how I would do it right then I got home and I ate my tuna <laughs> so that was basically my life for a couple of months and it feels grindy it feels sacrificey um, but of course that's how it's gonna be that's just the that's just the that's the fundamentals again and that's exactly what I would do if I had to start all over again I would not hesitate to do that again because that's what needs to get done. It feels tough when you're in it, but when you look back, that's something you're gonna be proud of. It's something that's like, hey, look, I did that. I can tell that story. Um, and you know, I'll be 100% re ready to do that again if I needed to do it. You build that resilience, you build that toughness, and it's kind of like, hey, I can, t I can tackle anything. And now you have that figured out. So you're making as much income as you can, you're cutting as, as much expenses as you can, and after a few months, you're gonna have some money saved up because you're paying yourself first. So now you have this, Lump sum, you have your, you're building this capital. And this is where my first mistake that I would actually try to avoid if I was gonna do this again. Instead of going right away and throwing all that money into a business, I would invest in myself. I would put that money into learning literally everything that I could about the business. Um, when I started, I didn't wanna spend money on education or you know teachings for a business. I thought you know I would just learn from experience. I learned from doing it. But as Otto von Bismarck once said, only fools learn from experience. I would rather profit from other people's experiences. So don't learn from trial and error if you don't have to. People have, are out there that have done it, right? I've done it. You can learn from my videos on YouTube. You can learn from what I have out there on content. You can learn from other people that have done it. There's hundreds and thousands of people that have done it. Find someone that you like and take the knowledge from them so you don't waste that hard earned first saved up amount of capital on you know a failed product, on a failed venture. Try as best you can to avoid that by investing in yourself, right? Learn, 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 learn. Because the truth of the matter is even if I really, real life scenario, I lost everything, I really would not have lost the most important investment because it's not my Amazon products, not any business that I run. The most important investment is in here, right? It's the investment in myself. It's the knowledge and the experience that I've gained over the years that I would be confident that I could do it again, right? It's the it's the high income stra strategies and skills and and things that I've picked up along the way. And that's why you'll hear stories of someone that, you know, they went from broke to rich, they lost all their, their entire fortune and they made it again. Sometimes they'll maybe even lose a second time and then they'll make it again because they have those skills. But you never hear the story of someone that wins the lottery, loses it all and then makes it back because those are coming from poor money habits. People win the lottery, they lose it all the time. You always hear that. Two, three years, they lose it because they have poor money habits. They never invested in themselves. They just invested in lottery tickets and they got fucking lucky. So don't rely on getting lucky. Rely on yourself because if you rely on yourself, no one can ever take that away from you. Next step, I would start diving into side hustles. So now I have, I'm working as much as I can. I'm saving as much income as I can. I've learned what I could about online business. I've, you know, I started doing the research. I've, I've learned the, taken in the knowledge. Now you can start using some of your money and putting that into your side hustles. Um, you know, things like maybe you can start with low capital things that like um, affiliate marketing, start for very little amount of money. You can do um, Shopify dropshipping, start for a little bit of money. Oh my God, my nose. You can even get into Amazon with some different models, you know, maybe retail arbitrage or create an Amazon agency, something like that, where you can start with a low amount of money. The idea of the side hustle is that now you're transitioning from working a lot for other people to working a little bit for yourself. 
Don't quit any of your day jobs, but start working a little bit for yourself and start gaining experience, right? You gained the knowledge, you took in the training, now you can gain that experience with your side hustle. So now you're earning income from your couple jobs that you have, you have low, very low expenses, and you're earning a little bit of money from your side hustle. But the most important thing about the side hustle really is the experience. Not so much the money, it's the experience and that ability to tell yourself, hey, I'm making money online. This is not something that some marketer is saying. It's not some Tim Ferriss four hour week, work week that so sounds like some fantasy. I'm actually doing it, I'm making money online and you can start crushing your limiting beliefs. And now at this point, once you're comfortable, you have enough money saved up, if you've invested in a training program already, you just invested in a course, maybe you did that in your you know, invest in yourself stage, I would go ahead and I would jump into taking that nest egg you have and put it into an online business. For me, of course, it would be Amazon FBA. And this is exactly what I would do, literally. This is step by step. I would get a job, make the sacrifices, earn, earn as much as I could, pay myself first, decrease my expenses, cut out all my luxuries, say no to all my friends, lock myself in a box for a couple of months, save up my money, and then I would go launch another Amazon product. And that's exactly how I would try my best to get back from zero to a million. And I'm confident I could do that pretty quickly because again, the knowledge and the experience that I have to do it, right? Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the mistakes that I would avoid. That's the roadmap, those are the steps, but now what mistakes can you avoid? The first thing I would do is I wouldn't wait too long. This is the first mistake I made when I, in my journey. I probably studied and I learned for two to three years. That's probably a little bit too long um, and it stopped me from growing because I was afraid, right? I had the fear and I, I was like, I know this stuff, but what if it goes wrong? And the reality is, it's never as scary as you think it is. It's like for driving. When I was a kid, I was scared of driving because there's you know, there's so many people involved that people are gonna get mad at you. There's a lot of risk, it's literally life and death. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, I was afraid of that. But once I got into the driver's seat and I had a good instructor, it was really easy. I realized, hey, this is not as scary as I made it out to be in my head. And that's how it usually is in business. It's never as scary as you make it out to be in your head. You just have to face that first fear and take that leap of faith. And if I acted quicker, I would have been where, you know, I would have been able to build quicker. The sooner you act, the sooner you get results. So I would eliminate that analysis paralysis period of um, the process. The next thing I would do, which I kind of already mentioned, is I would seek help right away, right? Learn from other people's experiences. Um, I went in there with the mindset of, I'll just go. I want to, you know, I just want to do it and I'll learn by going. I don't want to waste money uh, on a course. I don't want to waste money on, on mentorship. But at the end of the day, it's not a waste of money. I ended up actually wasting more money by failing products, right? If I just spent a little, I invested in a course or a program, um, I would have been able to do that faster. By the way, if you're curious, there'll be a link somewhere on over here to one of my free trainings that you can check out. So you can get started for free and learn some of the strategies that I implement daily on my Amazon business. Um, and the third mistake that I would avoid is I would avoid the quick shortcut mindset and I would stick to and adapt the long-term mindset, right? Um, that was what cost me the most money actually is trying to go in there and make money quick. I was looking for a way to make find a product that would make me 20K, 30, 50K a month um, and have a jackpot kind of product. And I went into the most competitive markets to do that and I failed product after product because of that mentality. If I just looked for something that wasn't maybe as exciting, right? You know, exciting. That would be like, you know, make me 500 bucks a month. I didn't want 500 bucks a month. I wanted 50 grand a month. So I ignored those products. When in reality, it would be much easier to launch 10, 500 a month products and make five grand than to just launch one product and make the same amount of money, right? So that's the mindset I would adapt. How can I build a portfolio of products that will all be winners? They're sure shot winners, but maybe not super exciting, but they all will be profitable. And I can build that out over years as opposed to trying to have one product uh, and make a, a killing on that product, right? Those are the mistakes I would avoid. That is the roadmap I would take. If I today lost it all and started from zero, you would see me on the streets delivering food for Skip the Dishes. You would see me, actually you wouldn't see me because I'd be locked in this room. I would be working my ass off. I would not be going to dinners. I would not have Netflix. I would not have Spotify. I would cut it all out, cut my expenses as low as possible. I would sacrifice it all. Okay, if I, you know, I did it before, I could do it again. That's exactly the road I would take. And I hope this pathway um, has maybe helped you see the steps or maybe in some way helped you map out your plan for how you can get to your million dollars online. Really, it's not that simple. Those are the steps that need to be taken. It's just a matter of acting on them um, and learning the strategies to actually implement and execute on that 
properly, all right? There's gonna be some videos over here for you to click if you wanna learn how to actually start Amazon FBA. I'm pointing everywhere because I don't know where it's actually gonna be, but there will be videos on the screen to show you A to Z how to start selling on Amazon today um, if you're ready to make that jump. Um, my name is JT Franco, the no bullshit Amazon seller. Be a rebel, build an empire. I am made to be free.